Hey there, Rack on Beer viewers. Welcome to uh, a brew day video for once. Uh, yeah, I've been, uh, you know, I've been hearing a lot of a lot of guys who make the uh, make the uh, the brew tubes, the the brewing YouTube videos, talk about how it's uh, seems like they make the same video over and over again, and it's it's tough to uh, it's tough to get a like a what a new take on on a brew, a brew day video. So I've been kind of thinking about that myself, and I'm thinking maybe I'm gonna like memeify them for the kids, you know, to get that to get the the kids in. So, so maybe like when I do the mash in, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do like I'm gonna do the salt bay, um, and this is just it's just gonna be like an hour and a half of me doing this. Oh, I guess it's it's up here, right? Shit, it's not even going in. Or maybe like, maybe like I do a trick shot, like whip the, whip the grain over my back and pour it in. What do you guys think? Let me, uh, let me know. 591 rock, 591 roll. Uh, call in, uh, lines are open. No. All right, down to, down to actual business. I'm down here, I'm coming down, coming at you from down here. Uh, I am making a smash beer today, uh, a small batch. Uh, I'm only doing, I'm only doing, well, I'm shooting for, usually I shoot for like 10 liters or 11 liters of finished beer, but I'm putting it in the Firmzilla and I feel like there's a pretty, like a significant amount of dead space in there due to the, the collecty, the collector, the collector, uh, the guy from the Marvel movies. Uh, he's uh, down there at the bottom, like stealing your yeast. Anyway, uh, so I'm actually I bumped it, I bumped it up a little bit to uh, I'm trying to get between 12 and 14 liters of finished beer, just so I'm I'm looking for around about 10 liters of finished like beer in the keg. Uh, yeah, so that's that's what I'm doing, I'm, and I'm I'm trying, gonna try and get like a smash recipe kind of going uh smash process because like i i did the homebrew wednesday a couple was it a couple weeks ago or was it this last homebrew wednesday i can't remember but where i went through all the hops and um uh, that's hot uh i've got all these like little 100 gram uh hops that i thought sounded interesting and then i never did anything with them and i think that this is going to be the way to get get those used up because a, a 100 gram pack of hops um, should give me a pretty decent IPA at this scale, at this smaller uh, scale. So yeah, uh, today is going to be Jester, uh, Jester Hops. That's what's going to go in, in this one today. Uh, so I don't know how much I'll film because yeah, I'm, uh, I'm just going to start dumping this malt in here and get the brew day going and I'm going to be cleaning because you can see that the brew house needs, uh, needs a sorting out. And uh, yeah, maybe I'll pop the camera back on, but that's what we're doing today. We're doing the doing the the smish smash, the smishy smash, the gesture smash. All right. Oh, maybe we'll talk to you later. Well, I guess I can give you a few more details about the actual beer. Um, you know, instead of just uh, doing a doing a bit up top about some uh, about some malt memeing. Uh, yeah, so. Uh, it's gonna be a gonna be a smash beer. It's gonna be um, just pale ale malt, uh, Viking pale ale malt, and uh, and jester hops. I might bitter with something else just because I feel like bittering with it. And then I guess it's not a smash. Who knows? I'll make an executive decision at the time of boil. But it's uh, three and a half kilos of um, Viking pale malt. Uh, should get me in the neighborhood of 1055. 1055 is where I'm shooting for. I want a, I want a high fives, uh, very low 6% uh, beer out of this. Uh, looking for a standard uh, IPA bitterness. Maybe, maybe a little bit less than standard. Like somewhere in between your, uh, somewhere in between your West Coast and your, uh, and your New England. I uh, did water additions for uh, for a light hoppy beer. Uh, the light, I think it's actually called light and hoppy in the uh, in the old beer smith. 
Uh, so that's the target profile, RO water, um, 20 liters of RO, well, 18 liters of RO water uh, to match the light and happy profile, which was, uh, I didn't write it down, it's on my phone. Uh, it was uh, some amount of salts. I'll put the, uh, I'll never remember to put the recipe down at the bottom. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, that's uh, that's what we're shooting for. I'm going to go um, with a big hop stand. We're going to do a, a small bittering addition at 60. Uh, and then I'm going to do a big hop stand. And I'm actually considering just dumping uh, all, all of the jester in on a hop stand and not even doing a dry hop on this. Uh, we're going to do it with kvike. We're going to do it under pressure in the firmzilla. I want to turn this beer around fast like real fast like i'm talking lickety split uh and the, yeah that's the plan it's kind of also kind of a shoddy brew day um it's no sparge so i've got the full volume of water in there with the green uh, father pipe in we're just gonna mash it and then we're gonna um yeah i'm just gonna mash it pull it boil it cool it stick it in the fridge use some harvested uh, Voss on it, done, done and dusted, do some cleanup. I got um, projects going on inside the house and uh, yard work I want to do in between. So yeah, all right, that's that's a little bit, a little bit more, a little more behind the scenes, a little bit more inside baseball for you before I, uh, so I, I act a little bit more professionally on this uh, brew day video. All right. Now I'll talk to you guys later. Hello. All right. We're gonna do the uh, we're gonna do the whirlpool. I got the. Wort is. Uh, oh yeah, look at that. That's a that's a hole up into the ceiling. It um uh, you know, goes into another dimension. As far as I know, I don't know. I just throw junk up there. Um yeah. So we're about to. Uh, I got the. We're at about 86 on the old uh, on the old wort. Uh, we're done with the boil. I'm just uh, recirculating it through the counter flow, and I'm about to uh, I'm about to put in the hops for the uh, for the hop uh, the hop stand. And uh, I thought that I would uh, I just I I opened these, and uh, they're jester. I've never smelled a jester before. I mean, you know, not in a brewing context. I mean. Smelled plenty of jesters in my time. If you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> so this is the oh shit 2015 crop. All right, well, oh, best used before 2018. It is 2021. Hmm. Well, anyway, what are you gonna do? Here is a shot glass or a tasting glass full of jester. I mean, it does, it smells, it smells spicy. Um, there is a little bit of fruitiness to it. I, again, um, didn't look up what Jester is actually supposed to smell like. I actually have, I think, some more Jester in the, in the, um, in the freezer. I'm going to go look through the freezer or back through that video that I made earlier. Because I, no, I did actually make a, I made a spreadsheet. I want to look through the spreadsheet because I don't remember what I actually have. But if there's if there's more jester, I might I might do a, a bigger dry hop. I left about this is 80 grams here, or like 81.2 grams. Uh, I wasn't being real careful when measuring. Uh, and then that's going to be the hop stand, and then whatever is left. And if I find anything in the if I find anything in the freezer, I think I'll probably just hop stand or I'll dry hop it all. But um. Yeah, I mean that's got that's got promise. Uh, I mean, regardless, it's just going to be a, a nice like um, hoppy beer. It's either going to be a very English IPA or it's going to be a very like yeah, I don't know how it's going to turn out. But uh, I'm about to go uh, dump this in, and um, I think uh, I got the the Firmzilla is uh, sanitizing right now. Uh, I think that the next time you're going to talk to me is going to be way in the future um possibly a week and a half in the future when i'm drinking this which is my hope see you then
Hey Rack on Beer viewers, welcome to the tasting for the Jester. Um, it's gonna be a it's gonna be a little bit of a weird uh, situation. Uh, I'm gonna do a I'm gonna do a homebrew another homebrew Wednesday. I don't know if this will be Green Glass or Homebrew Wednesday, but I'll do another one where I'll kind of explain the the situation a little bit more. I think, but uh, this suffice to say, I got the the Jester. Um, done uh quite a while ago and then um right about the time when uh, i wanted to in fact the day i came out to kig the smash the jester smash i found out that the keezer was dead uh and then what i did is i kept it in the firmzilla cold and pressurized trying to minimize any ill effects to it you know due to uh, oxygenation or anything because I couldn't serve it I didn't have any way to serve it so I didn't want to transfer it and then not be able to serve it for I didn't know how long but now I've got you know things in motion for that but the problem is is that uh, when I went to transfer it so it's been sitting in the from Zilla for about three weeks three weeks past when I wanted to keg it today I started kicking it and I don't know something happened with the uh, with the dip to well, multiple things happened the the floating dip tube uh it it got messed up on the end of the ball and it was just sucking co2 in uh so it was just foaming and it was just blowing foam out of the release valve on the keg uh and it was just awful and i was trying to like swirl it around um and and turn the pressure up and get the get the hose to go back under and it would not it would not get back under the the surface the beer surface level so it just kept like you know sucking in like little spurts of beer and then spurts of co2 and it was a it was a disaster and then one of the hose clamps let loose on my um on my carbonation uh rig and and basically blew the the co2 bottle out uh, so then I was out of CO2. I couldn't, so then I'm screwed because I'm completely out of CO2 now. I just put a brand new bottle on that and it just all like blew right out because it, the hose clamp failed down by the regulator. So it was just like, ooh. Uh, and they're not big bottles, they're soda stream bottles. So there's not that much. Anyway, so um, what we got going on here is, is we got, uh, there's the Jester. And there's the Jester again. I got about half of it into the keg, so maybe four, four-ish, four, five, six liters. Um, and then these two liters of, uh, that I just poured out of the fermenter into, uh, into a pitcher and uh, my giant mug. So this is what we're gonna be doing the tasting on. I'm gonna try and let the keg settle and finish carving it. It's, it's, it's decently carved. It's low, super low carbonation. I'll try and do maybe another tasting, but I don't know, it could be completely ruined. Uh, so this might be actually the best tasting I'm gonna get out of it. And uh, I guess I'm gonna get uh, wasted today. Uh, Cause I'm not, it actually smells rather nice. Um, if we actually just get straight to the review. It smells, it didn't, it didn't lose. I did have some samples of this um, when it was, when it was ready to kick. I did uh, take a few pints of it uh, straight out of the Firmzilla. It wasn't carved very well. Uh, so it was pretty much flat. It's a bit better carved now. So shockingly enough, uh, I did put it on pressure for a while before another gas canister died in the Firmzilla, but uh, so it smells more or less like it did when I was taking samples of it. Which is to say this nice kind of um, minty menthol type. Um, yeah, it's got a, it's got a real menthol type uh, smell to it. There's a little bit of a kind of a citrusy and then, and then an earthy kind of floral tone. It kind of reminds me of like Fuggles with uh, like old school British IPAs you used to get here that were made with like Fuggles. Uh, so they had that kind of earthy potpourri type note. But instead of instead of potpourri, this one's more minty. 
Um, I guess mint menthol is kind of the best that I can describe it. It's ridiculous to be drinking it out of here. You can see it's it's pretty hazy um, just because I was swirling it. I had the butterfly valve closed to keep the any trube and stuff down in the collector, but I mean there was still you know some some stuff in there that got swirled up when I was trying to resubmerge the dip tube um, by kind of and then obviously just dumping this straight out of the top of the the firmzilla. But, I mean, it doesn't taste like terribly of yeast or, or like hop debris or anything, and there's no like hops or anything floating in it. So it's probably not the, the absolute like cleanest taste. That'll probably come from the keg if it's not screwed. Um, but it, it tastes, it's, it's not a bad, it's, it's pretty decent beer. So this is Viking Pale Ale Mall and Jester Hops, uh, and it finished, and uh, Voss, Voss uh, Kvike Yeast, and it finished at 10.10, or 10.9s, right there. So it, um, it's right up at the, it's in the high fives, like low 6% alcohol. Um, it's got a nice firm bitterness to it, uh, that the, the Jester, oh no, I, I, I cheated and I used Magnum. I used a little bit of Magnum to bitter because I wanted to use all the Jester that I had for flavor additions, flavor and aroma additions. So it's got that nice clean bitterness to it. It really does remind me of um, of kind of an old school like English pale ale or English pale. Um, but it does it does have some citrus to it. It's got that mint flavor. That, that almost like um, herbal mint uh, flavor to it, but it does have a it does have like a hint of citrus to it. It does have kind of a citrus quality. Um, and that could be the yeast, that could be that boss coming through. So you, you never know. Um, if I'd have had something cleaner, I would have I would have used um, I would have used that, but I, I had boss harvested, so that's that's what I ended up using. So I'm kind of kicking myself now because it's not it's not quite a like it's not a super uh, you know style like uh, it's not giving the hops the absolute best chance to shine if I'm using a relatively characterful yeast. I did I did ferment this at like um, uh, like 18, so I didn't do like a super high ferment on it. So I tried to keep the yeast character as, as even as possible. But I mean, all said, it's a really nice beer. Uh, the, the Jester is really just nice. It's just a nice, a nice refreshing beer. Um, it doesn't have that kind of earthy, uh, that earthy flavor that I, uh, that I, uh, I kind of associate with most English hops. Uh, earthy potpourri type uh, flavor if you put them in like a, in a light beer in, in larger quantities. It does not have that at all. It has a very pleasant, yeah, minty herbal, um, slightly grassy, slightly citrus. It's like, um, it's like minty Cascade, which I think Cascade is a descendant of, I don't, I don't know like genealogies on hops. I know that for all this beer went through, it is, it is actually pretty decent. So, I don't have too much more to say. Maybe I'll make an addendum later if the kegged one comes out better once it's uh, once it uh, settles down. But uh, if not, thanks for watching my ridiculous reviews, my ridiculous grained glass or whatever I did where in the end I ended up uh, two, two fists chugging the, um, the tasting. And uh, yeah, if you want to see more uh, weird crap like that, uh, stay tuned or subscribe or uh, check out some other videos. And uh, yeah, we'll see. Uh, we'll see you next time. Cheers, guys.